Probably the most difficult thing about oil paints is being able to control the paint and make it move and do what you want in the canvas. That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil paint so you get better, faster. Now before we begin, I want to say a thing or two about detail. Now, I'm not saying that detail is good or bad. I just want to let beginners know that with oil painting, detail isn't everything. If you look at some of the greatest oil paintings, not many of them are even close to photo real. Now you can get photo real with oil paint. I just encourage beginners to see the beauty and being able to accurately portray a subject while still leaving room for expression. All right, let's get going. Now the first aspect of oil paints that make it difficult to control is the slow dry time. Unlike acrylics or watercolors, oil paints can stay wet on the canvas for days. And a lot of beginners reaction to this is to find mediums that will quicken the dry time of their oil paint. Now I highly recommend not doing this because it's avoiding the main difference of oil paint instead of embracing it. We want those colors on the canvas to stay wet as long as possible so we can really push them, pull them, and move them and make them do what we want to do for the longest period of time. When using watercolors or acrylics it's easy to layer the paint because the previous layer dries so quickly. If you tried to do this with oil paints you'd run into a lot of problems. So you have to know when to paint around things. Take these clouds for example. When I try to paint the sky first and layer the clouds over top of this wet sky it doesn't work. So I paint the sky around where I want the clouds to be. That way when I go to paint the clouds I'm painting on clean canvas and not wet paint. If you want more detailed information into this process you can watch the full video that this clip is from right here. Now some people have the opposite problem where they try to paint around everything and separate all their colors and values instead of building them. So how do you build them? Well first you should divide up your painting by color and value. If you can, I highly suggest getting Kevin McPherson's book, Filling Your Paintings with Light and Color, to have more information on this concept. Its visuals really helped me develop a healthy process for breaking down a painting when I was first learning how to paint. And I think it can do the same for you. Now if I was painting this tree in a landscape, I would first start by just painting the whole tree a dark color with thin paint. Now yes, there are different colors and values within this tree, but I can group them all together as one to make things simple. Now when I say thin paint, I mean thinned out with paint thinner, not medium. Since I use linseed oil, which is a slow drying medium, I don't want to lay that out first because it won't dry that quickly and I won't be able to build on top of it. Now see, the paint thinner is going to speed the dry time, which we actually want in the beginning stages of a painting so that you can get a good foundation and build off of it. Now as I move to the midtones, I'm going to slowly stop using the paint thinner and use more medium, but don't use too much medium, just enough to get the paint flowing. If you use too much medium, it's just going to be impossible to build over top of it. Now by the time I'm at the highlights, I'm using just straight thick paint. If you want to dive more into this process of painting thin to thick, I've made a whole video on that which you can watch right here. Now my favorite way to describe oil paint has always been it's a process of pushing and pulling. We pushed the darks in this tree and then we started pulling back with the lights. And now if you want you can go and push back in a little bit with the darks. Now it is best to work thin to thick and dark to light but you still have to understand that oil paint isn't as much of a linear process as say acrylics or watercolors. There's a lot of bouncing back and forth. In previous videos I've described oil paint as kind of like putting together a puzzle. Sometimes you need to figure out other sections of the puzzle in order to figure out the section that you're on. If you watch any of my portrait painting videos you know this is a huge component of how I like to work. Instead I block out the main shapes and values and use the paint almost like clay to carve out certain features. There's a lot of pushing and pulling of the paint in my portrait process. And you can see the best video on this process right here. Okay, the negative space. A lot of beginners don't understand how helpful the space around the object you're painting can be. In the tree example, the negative space of the sky allows me to reshape the tree as I see fit. Now don't be afraid to remove paint from your canvas. Oil paint isn't just an additive process, it's also subtractive as well. So if you get areas that are just getting too thick to rework, don't be afraid to take a palette knife or a rag or paper towel and just wipe it off and start that section over. Brush work. Choosing the right brush and use it in the right way can give you a lot more control over your painting. A great example is how powerful a good sturdy flat brush can be. Sometimes I will paint an entire painting using just this flat brush because I can make such a wide variety of strokes. 
Also, its straight edge allows me to get very sharp, straight lines as well. The way you hold your brush can give you a lot more control too. Very rarely do I ever hold a paintbrush like a pen or a pencil. A lot of times I'm holding it by the end of the handle so I'm far away and I'm not afraid to adjust my hand and pull the brush you know, up or sideways, down, whichever way. When you get stuck using your brush like a pen or a pencil, it really limits your ability to make different strokes. Painting surfaces. Now there are definitely certain painting surfaces that are a lot harder to control the paint on than others. For example, those smooth gessoed painting panels are like painting on hot grease. Now there's a lot of artists that use them and do great work on them, but for beginners, I can see that being a very difficult way to control the paint. Your best bet is just good old acrylic primed canvas. Now another option is Arches Oil Paper. I have a link to where you can buy that on Amazon below. Now I see this paper as kind of like a good in-between from acrylics and watercolors to oils. Now it's a very absorbent paper, so the paint's not gonna sit on top of it as much, which I find a little more difficult, but I could see a beginner liking the extra control that you have with it. A lot of people don't think about this, but the size of canvas that you paint on can have a great effect on your ability to control the paint. When you have more space to spread out the paint, it makes it much easier to control because it's easier to build and push it and pull it around. For example, I struggled for a long time painting small plain air pieces because it just felt like so much paint piled onto a little canvas and I felt just in the painting process so quickly, I would find myself with this big mound of paint on this little canvas and it was so hard to keep adding and layering to it. It was so refreshing when I actually took out larger canvases to plain air paint and that way I could really spread out the paint and I had much more room to make more layers. Now I encourage everyone to try and paint bigger than they normally do. And now when I say paint bigger, that doesn't mean just get a big canvas and still paint the same way you would on a small canvas and just take more time. I want you to do the exact opposite. I want you to paint on a canvas that's twice as big as what you're normally used to, but I want you to do it in half the amount of time. This is actually a great exercise to really open you up and completely change your perspective on oil painting. And the goal of this exercise isn't to come out with a great painting. Your painting isn't gonna be the best you can do, but it's going to show you how fast you can work and really show you how the paint moves on the canvas. Just the way you're gonna physically move your body and your arm and your hand a lot more on this big canvas is gonna really shift the way you see things. And being able to start with a really big brush is gonna leave you more range to get smaller and smaller with your brushes and get more and more detail as you go. All right, to recap, what did we learn on controlling the paint today? Detail isn't everything. Embrace the slow drying time of the paint. Know when to paint around something. Know when to build the paint. Work thin to thick. Oil paint is about pushing and pulling. Don't forget about the negative space. Wipe off paint if you need to. Use the right brush in the right way. Choose a good painting surface and try painting bigger and faster. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for full real-time painting video tutorials, I'll offer those on my Patreon page, which is linked below. In the description of this video, I also have Amazon links to all the materials that I suggest for beginners. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. I also offer you this video and this video. They're both great. Just pick one. Come on.